Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to UV map procedurally, which means we don't need to actually make our own UV map, it's going to make it on the fly. So, uh, in what kind of situation is this thing useful? Well, uh, here you can see I have a brick texture, right? And if I try to extend this, like to make another brick wall, uh, you can see it's kind of stretching the very last pixel here, and that applies to um, any edge that I pick. Right, this is an issue. And right now, yes, it's using generated coordinates, but the same issue exists with UV coordinates because it's this 2D coordinate system that isn't updating, right? So if I was to go into my UV map here, just so you understand the problem, uh, this face totally has a UV map. This one is a infinitely thin line, okay? So we somehow want it uh, to update that. So how are we gonna do this? The answer is we're going to use geometry nodes. So in geometry nodes, make a geo nodes group, and it turns out that we can actually unwrap procedurally and send that data to the material editor. So we're going to add a UV unwrap node. What this is going to do is it's going to unwrap our mesh on the fly, right? So we could just send that data over. And to send that data over, I'm going to store named attribute, set it to a vector, because this is vector data connect that and give it a name. So I'm, I'm calling mine custom UV. You can call yours whatever you want. So what's happening here is we have a UV unwrap. You can set different settings for this. It doesn't really matter. What does matter is we're sending this data into an attribute called custom UV. And what that means is now if I go to the shading workspace, instead of texture coordinates, I can use an attribute called the same thing, custom UV. And you can see here's our UV map but it actually updates on the fly, as you can see, which means if we were to put this on a brick texture or an image texture, anything that's kind of like non-3D texture, and we can deal with this rotation in a bit, but you can see it's updating on the fly. Now there is another issue here, um, and that is that uh, the, the scaling is kind of changing. So we, we have solved one issue, right? So now we can uh, add bricks to new surfaces, but you can see, look at the density of the brick, right? And as I add more UV map, and it's weird that it kind of rotates depending on like how much you drag it. Uh, you could actually do a rotation if you want to fix that, but you can see the scaling changes right here. We have a denser brick. So what we want to do is we want to send the UV map over, but not have it change the scaling on the fly. And that's also something we can do procedurally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the face area, right? We want to make a function that looks at how much faces we have and then uh, adjusts according to that. I'm going to use an accumulate field node, connect this. So now this is going to take the face area and add it for every single face. So I'm going to add it for every single face and we want to look at this total. Okay. And then it's literally as easy as scaling our UV unwrap by that amount. And that's going to, by the way, make it a bit, um, more dense, which we can also fix, but you can see it's now maintaining its density. It's not making it smaller or bigger. Uh, so again, what's happening here is we're taking the face area, we're saying calculate this for every face and add them, and then scale our UV unwrap by that amount so that if we have more face data, it's gonna make our UV map uh, effectively bigger or smaller, whichever one makes sense, okay? Now, uh, to make it not as dense, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this total and just send it through a bit of math. So I'm going to take this and then divide it by like six or something. So it's a bit smaller. And you can see now it's maintaining our uh, size. Now, what I've found is that when you extrude, you can totally uh, kind of mess around with this and it's going to rotate um, 90 degrees sometimes, right? So you can kind of just fine tune this. But if you have a, um, a coordinate system, like if you have something like this where it's a vertical and you want to uh, switch this over, uh, you can totally do a rotation on this, right? So that would look like taking this attribute, using a vector rotate node, and then rotating by 90 degrees. So regardless of what you have, uh, you can edit that on the fly. Now, uh, you could have totally made a more complex material that has displacement and stuff like that. Uh, but the point is you can now UV unwrap procedurally, meaning you can use a 2D texture on the fly procedurally. 